Hello, a video about X32 Reaper and how to use it on Macintosh. Again, this is a, uh, a terminal uh, a console application, so there is no GUI. As such, it's a little bit more difficult to use as, the, uh, as would be the uh, X32 Reaper on the Windows uh, system. Uh, so let's look at the uh, X32 setup. I'm going to setup and in the network options, you can see that my um, address is 192.168.162. The mask is 255.255.255.0. And I have my gateway, which is 192.168.1.255. Your values may differ on the gateway and on the IP address for the X32. But remember the IP address for the X32 because you will have to use it uh, in the uh, X32 Reaper setup. Okay, uh, we are now on the uh, Macintosh and uh, I'm going to change to my uh, x32 Reaper uh, directory. And in this uh, directory you can see that I have only two files. Okay, um, well there is a log file but this is the result of previous runs. Um, the main file uh, is the executable, which is x32 reaper, here, this guy. And the other file, the other important file is x32, um, the x32 reaper.ini. Uh, this is the resource file. So if I do a more on, it's a dot, so it's a hidden file. Um, if I can spell it right, reaper.ini, then you can see the contents of the file. Well, there are several elements here. Uh, the first line, basically, just ignore it. Um, it's uh, there for essentially Windows and uh, some, uh, some debug flags. Then you'll find two things. Um, the first one, the first uh, element is 192.168.1.62 and remember this is actually the IP address of the X32. Okay. Then the second IP address should be the IP address of this Macintosh and we'll verify if this is right. I'm not sure because I've been using this Macintosh into uh, different uh, you know, uh, situations. And then there are two ports, uh, 10.0.25 and 10.0.27, which are used for communications. And then a bunch of flags, which are explained in the documentation. Okay, but the four lines after the first one are really the most important lines and they have to be set up right. Otherwise, um, you will not be able to communicate correctly with the X32 uh, and Reaper. Now, if I launch uh, the executable, what will happen? Well, the program will try to establish a communication with the X32, which is just behind. And of course, it will not be able to do so because uh, Reaper is not running. Okay, so let's try nevertheless to launch it. So if I launch the program, okay, see what happens. It says, oh, I'm trying to find basically the X32 at IP blah blah 162. Reaper is actually expected to be at 1.96, okay. And um, it's receiving on port 10.0.27, sending on port 10.0.25, and a bunch of flags. And of course, it stops because there is no X32 to communicate with, or there is no uh, Reaper to communicate with. Okay? So, we have to actually launch um, Reaper before using this program. Let's launch uh, Reaper, and I have Reaper somewhere on this Macintosh. Uh, let me try to show you that. Um, I have it here, somewhere at the bottom, okay. Um, and I can actually um, launch Reaper from here. No, this is Firefox. Um, I can launch Reaper from here.
So this is running the evaluation license of uh, uh, Reaper because I don't have the official license on this Macintosh. Um, and I can select the options. Okay, from the options I can lo look at um, preferences. In the preferences, actually, going down to, you know, the control slash OSC slash web, I have here one thing to set up, which is the X32 um, surface control. Okay, the way you do that is actually by clicking Add. It opens a window uh, which asks you for selecting a surface mode. In there, you choose Open Sound Control. And this will come with a device name, you know, a pattern config, receive on port, send to port, the host IP, which happens to be 109, you know, not the 96 that we had before, so we'll have to change that. Um, the IP, uh, the device IP, and, you know, uh, outgoing uh, packet size and things like that. So, the same thing as we have here in uh, OSC X32. I have created that and this is what I have actually as parameters. So you should be uh, using the same type of parameters. So device name I gave it X32. The pattern config is actually called X32 and I can open the config directory. Here I will find you know somewhere in my home directory in the app store OSC, okay? Here is the x32.reaper osc. This is the file that you have, that you create. And in this file, you set up the um, uh, data as I've been uh, showing in the documentation. I'll come back to that later on. So basically, we have this file here. So again, the receive on port is 10027. The send to port is 10025. The device IP has been set to 96, and the device actually is the X32 Reaper program. So, and it's running on the same computer, so I'll change that to 109. Okay, the rest stays the same, and I say OK. Similarly, uh, in this directory, I will change this file, uh, the uh, resource file to reflect the 109 instead of the 96 that I have here. Um, so x32 reaper.any I'm using vi but you can use any other uh, uh, program and I said 109. So my x32 is at IP address 62 my computer is 109. This is where I'm going to find Reaper. Okay. Escape. Exit this. So we agree now that basically I have X32 Reaper, which should be ready to run. This, I don't need that anymore. I don't need this guy anymore because everything has been set up here uh, correctly. I have Reaper running, okay, and what I'm going to be doing now is launch um, the X32 Reaper program. Okay, so I cleaned everything, I stopped uh, Reaper because uh, the ideal situation, you should be running X32 Reaper before you run Reaper. And I cleaned the screen and I'm going to run uh, X32 Reaper. Okay, so X32 Reaper is this time starting and it says that it found the X32. It found it and it's connected. So now X32 Reaper is running. It's expecting the X32 at IP address 62, the Reaper at the, uh, the, the, the system at uh, address 109. And my X32 is connected. Uh, all this is all on the same Wi-Fi. So if I start again Reaper, I'm starting Reaper and um, then we'll see what happens. I have now basically Reaper uh, which is running and I have my X32 uh, th uh, running. 
um, if I select different channels, you can see that the channel actually is following my selection from the X32. Okay, if I'm moving faders, you can see that the faders are moving the same way. And if I move the faders from um, my system, okay, you can see that the X32 faders are moving the same way, you know, along. And of course, this is all working as expected. So this is a very quick setup. Uh, all the rest is as uh, described in the documentation. Again, the uh, X32 is running at, uh, you know, on the Macintosh. This is my setup with the uh, IP address, okay? These are the values for the program. And the last thing that I have to show you is how to set up the OSC file. Setting up the OSC file for uh, Reaper is actually quite simple. Um, Reaper is still running, by the way, here. Okay, if I move the uh, an X32 uh, fader, I still have Reaper actually following up. Um, the idea is to go in Reaper, in the options, go back, go down to preferences. In the preferences, we have the uh, the Control OSC web. Okay, there you can actually, when you click add or when you edit your uh, section here, you select a pattern config file by going in the directory, okay, in which you can add a file. And this file here, actually, we can try to edit it. Um, it's considered unknown, so we have to VI or, you know, use a uh, Emacs editor or something like that. The best way is to probably use a, a VI in a terminal window to uh, um, open and edit this file. I'll go and uh, open a new terminal. New window. And uh, we saw that this was in whatever directory, I never know actually where this is, it's in the uh, apps oh, uh, library, so cd library yeah, that exists um, cd application support of course that doesn't exist Um, then we go in which directory is that? Probably Reaper. And it's in OSC. Then if we list the files there, we can see that there is a file called x32 Reaper OSC. Dot Reaper OSC. This file contains basically all the data which has been shown in the documentation. All right, and you find this information in um, my website. That's my website. Okay, you go down to Reaper which I've set up here. Reaper, you download the documentation, which is this uh, uh, flag here, and this data is actually contained here. This is the exact same data, okay? Maybe there's a difference in the uh, track count, but besides this, it is really the same information, okay? Here I have track count uh, 32, this is actually uh, 84, and if you read the documentation, you'll find out that you have, or it's a very good idea, to set the track count number to the uh, actual value that you need for your, um, your Reaper session. So what you would do, basically, is copy all this data here. And going into this file, 
okay um, you can just uh, remove everything okay insert put everything in there so this time I have you know 84 as the count it doesn't really matter uh, for this uh, test you can just you know say goodbye and using this my Reaper program is going to use the new file that I just created you know rather than the previous one and that will not change you know the behavior of uh, of Reaper just uh, adding more tracks and you can see that this you know is still basically running as expected if I move this fader the fader over there is moving as well or it looks like yes um, and uh, you know everything is behaving as uh, expected all right hope this helps thank you for watching bye bye